and welcome. Jonathan Hickman has returned to the Marvel Universe to build another epic story. This time around, the X-Men are the focus of Hickman's grand scheme, as he tries to solve all of the problems for all of the mutants on the planet. Now, I have to take a moment and mention that I don't regularly follow this team or any of the secondary titles. To be blunt, I simply don't care. It's a title I only check out when an interesting creator takes over. Even then, due to the strict editorial control on the X-Men, I'm usually not impressed with the results. Grant Morrison's slowly neutered tenure on the title being a prime example. For highly casual readers, like myself, the two miniseries in question don't require encyclopedic knowledge of the X-Men, although basic awareness of the team doesn't hurt. Furthermore, if there are prior recent developments that contributed to the plot, I'm unaware of them. These two details are worth mentioning because everything one needs to know is laid out in each miniseries. So for new or casual readers, this is a good entry point. The two miniseries, House of X and Powers of X, are the mission statement concerning the new status of the X-Men, and it is a rather dramatic change. All of it is centered around Krakoa, an island that appears to be a sentient mutant form of life. Krakoa is also capable of producing plant life that has a variety of practical uses, perhaps the most important of which is the ability to replicate itself. Once fully grown, these replications serve as embassies around the world. Furthermore, all of these replications are linked together and act as gateways from one part of the world or one part of the solar system to one another. Another highly important development is that the death of a mutant has been rendered meaningless. Within a few days, a new body can be grown, the most current version of that person's consciousness can be installed, and that mutant can continue on, seemingly uninterrupted. This ensures that mutants will thrive well into the future. Of all the new additions, this one seems to be the weakest. It removes the tension from any conflict because, if the outcome is fatal, well, then there's a quick reset button to press. At the same time, Charles Xavier and Jean Grey have died and come back to life so many times that dying has become a worthless plot point. So all things considered, having this resurrection ability readily available isn't a terrible idea. Presumably, there will be some complication in the process that will occur in the future. Finally, Charles Xavier's dream of peaceful coexistence with humans has also undergone a significant change. Now the focus of that vision is to eventually take over the planet, as basically dictated by natural selection. While mutants intend to continue on peaceful terms with humans, their tolerance for interference in their destiny is mostly non-existent. It's a change of direction that finally needed to be explored, given the team's past, tragic history. Considering the fact that they are the next stage of evolution for humanity, they should, as the superior species, assert their dominance and ensure their own survival. Sure, this new vision has the feel and appearance of benevolent fascism. But, you know, after 50 years of trying to make things work with humans, a radical change of perspective might be what's necessary. There is one more very notable change, and that would be Moira McTaggart. She is a pivotal figure in Powers of X. There is a change to her status, which is both interesting and highly unexpected. It completely alters her past role and interactions with the X-Men over the years. As someone who prefers not to spoil major developments, I will simply acknowledge it and move along. To be honest, I'm not convinced that Charles Xavier isn't the Maker, also known as the Evil Reed Richards from the now-deceased Ultimate Universe. They walk the same, talk the same, and have similar goals. That goal being to create a distinct society, preferably one they control. And one has to be suspicious of their similar appearance. It's too obvious to be overlooked. This could end up being the logical end to the overall saga. Implicit in a utopian setting is a hidden flaw. Once noticed and exploited, this flaw brings the utopia down. It's not much of a stretch to suggest the flaw is Charles Xavier, or, for that matter, the vision of the person presumed to be Charles Xavier. A pertinent question would be, does one need to read both miniseries to understand what's going on? In my opinion, yes. While there are two distinct stories that complement one another, and they could be read separately, they are both laying the foundation of the concept. Basically, Powers of X explains and justifies the changes occurring in House of X. In fact, I would also recommend the suggested reading order. The plot of both miniseries have common points where they overlap. It might be best to read it in the intended order. There is a slight criticism one can apply to Jonathan Hickman's work. 
While he does do good characterization, and most characters feel relatively distinct, there's not much in the way of character progression. That is, characters remain essentially unchanged through the course of a story. Their reactions are mostly predictable and tend to favor the plot moving forward. Admittedly, this is a very soft criticism, and an attempt to find a flaw in these 12 issues for the sake of appearing objective. Because, quite honestly, as a reboot of the franchise and a mission statement, it's about as solid as one could possibly hope for. Furthermore, both House of X and Powers of X feel complete. Certainly, there's a lot more story to be gleaned from these radical changes, but at the end, an entire story has been told. A new vision and a new society has been established, challenges have been addressed, conflicts have been resolved, and, best yet, it makes one wonder where this is all going to lead. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how one does a proper miniseries. Well, okay, two miniseries, but the point remains unchanged. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.